Well, today's video was supposed to be all about the automatic super project. However, as you guys saw in the end of the last video, I bust a power steering line. I closed out the video and didn't even realize at Drift HQ we had a power steering line on the shelf that works perfectly to uh, solve the problem. So we're gonna start off this video with some more four rotor shreds. As a reminder, Drift HQ and LZ MFG, every $5 you spend gets you entered for a chance to win our Mark IV Super and $20,000 cash. And we got a lot of good stuff on the shelf. Johan's buttoning everything back up and we're about to fire this baby up and uh, see what she can do. are good we didn't have any leaks from the power steering um, but now that I'm actually driving the car running a little bit of like clearance issues in the front that'll be really easy to address but again it's like really hard to find this stuff out until we start driving the car <sighs> good way to start the day if you guys caught that or not but uh our next up thing now that we get the power steering address this car's had cra crazy oil pressures and we uh, we actually have an oil pressure regulator in it that limits it to about 120 psi but i think because of the sheer volume of the four rotor and the drive sum system we have it just pisses off everything like the typical lines that we would run in any other car are not cutting it on this so we're going to need to go some gnarly probably crimped industrial lines that can hold up to some high pressure because we had a line fail and luckily i was able to kill the car quick but something we don't want to have on track so we were planning on beefing up the system but we kind of wanted to see what the limits of these coolers and these lines would be but uh it's pretty clear now that we have to overbuild everything in the oil system and then we should be good but other than that that was a uh, that was a pretty successful session yeah that was a lot like of fun yeah, yeah it did the thing Sounded like good hearing the car shift through the gears and uh, ribbon. It's, it's good. Hopefully we get this down oil line situation figured out. We got some stuff coming, so uh, it's pretty much what was done on the S15, and it just it needs to be done on this car. Uh, cool thing too, um, I haven't gone into a lot of detail on the gearbox in this. It's not HTG, that's who makes the transmission controller for the automatic trans, this is actually HGT sequential. This is actually a one-to-one -one sixth gear, so it brings the splits for all the other gears closer. All the sequentials I've ever had before, I've had a fifth gear one-to-one. -one. Maybe not the most ideal if I was trying to cruise this thing on the highway, but I love when I'm cruising around, it's like like the splits are very close together, which is awesome for the power band of this car. Probably sounds like a revving to the moon. It's only revving to nine grand and the car seem happy. The the way that the power band responds on this thing is so cool because it's almost like having a turbo car where once you're in it, you can feel it kind of rather than uh, most of the cars that I drive usually are rolling over up top. This thing just wants to go there. So success and now we will dive into the equally exciting but much less sound pleasing automatic Supra project. Definitely wasn't expecting to start this video off ripping the four rotor, but I'm stoked I got to hear it again. I hope you guys are too. Uh, next up, we are gonna be jumping into the interior of the Mark V stock automatic Supra to start dialing in a pretty fancy sequential shifter and a hydraulic cam brake while the HTG guys finalize all the transmission controls. I feel like I really did a poor job of highlighting this, but as a reminder, this is essentially the test mule or the R&D car. So they've done this before with other BMWs. In the end, the customer gets a turnkey solution where you would just literally click a drop down and there are services where you could have the soldering and all the wiring done. So all you have to do is install the TCM, plug a bunch of stuff in, click a drop down, and go have fun. But as with anything, it's boring doing what's already been done. So we're trying to develop something new, and you guys are seeing the process. All right. So Adam and Wartech are confident now with the shifting um, and the clutch pedal engagement and the factory shifting. So now they're asking us to go ahead and fit in the shifter for the sequential shifting. Part of that is removing this and getting in here 
uh, tracing out this pattern on the chassis to then mount it to the car with the minimal amount of work to do it. So right now, what I started doing was I removed the shifter, rather the mini saucer we got, and the only piece that I caught cut from the interior to fit the shifter is <clears throat> this piece right here. It has this point here for the shifter, the stock shifter to center on, but we no longer need it. So now I get, in order to get in here, I gotta remove this panel, the center console, and I can then trace the holes from the shifter, the aftermarket one, into the chassis and then mount it up. We got as far as removing the center piece. It has the controller for the, the display, the shifter itself, right? And there's a few connectors. So you disconnect all these connectors from the center console and then there's a big connector back here that you remove and it's just a sub harness for this whole center console so once you get all these pieces out and all the six, uh, m6 bolts that hold this unit in the whole piece comes out with the harness that way you don't have to worry about having to remove all this factory harness from the car and then once you finish all the modifications just drop it back in plug everything up and then we're doing true work like so with the plastic trim what i did is i marked center to where the stock shifter went and then i translate that into the chassis you can see here there is a black mark so that's my center line and then i use this knot here for the center line on the shifter which matches up to the black trim so then i could drill the holes put nut certs on the car and then due to the fact that I have this harness for the transmission running through for the GCU. I have to put spacers on the nut search so that the shifter sits a, lot, a little bit high and it has room for the harness to sit under there. That's the easiest point to go to because that hole is OEM, there's a hole there, there's a grommet, so it's easy access and you fish the wire through and you don't have to drill any holes other than the holes to fasten the shifter itself. Now the shifter bolts on. I, I'm using M6 nuts for my spacers for the moment so that we have the right depth. So now the next step is to cut the stock carbon fiber trim piece so that it fits around this unit nice and snug. They could go ahead and plug it in and do the programming for the shifter so that it has all the functions as if you were using this shifter which has the park and then when you press the side button to go in gear or in re reverse they could program the shifter to do all that without having to press any buttons all right so we, what we have here is the factory carbon piece this is the one controller that i was talking about and for traction parking and all that we want to keep all that so what i did here was mark the size where it needs to be trimmed so that the shifter actually fits through. So I'll mark, I marked it off and I will work my way little by little, trimming all that and test fitting on the shifter. Once I'm happy with the fitment, it will go on and it will be like it's meant to be there. Oh, he was doing B-roll. Michael's doing B-roll. Okay, shifters in, just four notchers to the chassis. Like I showed you, I put a nut between the shifter and the chassis. Whoa. We got over there, homie, trying to start the R32. Mm -hmm. But anyways, the wiring is done. As you see here, it's perfect. It goes through here, um, fits in, shifter center. So now it's time to put all the plastic pieces in. While we were doing that, we have this Chase Base Hydro that has the sideways master option. And roughly, we're trying to see where it will fit unfortunately these cars have like a huge plastic carbon piece here so we're trying to not cut too much of the interior but we'll see how it work that goes so for right now i have it marked up on the carpet with some gray sharpie let me see the light come on no no light so some gray sharpie so then we could put a base plate on there and then mount the hydro and then figure out the lines to go to the rear of the car uh, we're trying to figure out on the best way to mount it or make it functional without a dual caliber. 
because if we go straight to the calipers or the inline, uh, the car might get pissed off once it sees pressure. Okay, so we have the shifters in. Um, it's sitting in about center. I had a trim on the bottom and then on the sides so that the shifter fits snugly on there. Um, I'm not doing any more cutting or grinding on it. So they did some programming on the shifter. It was good. Now they're just trying to make sure that whatever inputs the shifter is getting, that is showing on the cluster. So if it's in park, that is in park. If it's in neutral or gear one through eight, that it shows on the dash so that we know in what gear we're in. While they do that and they program, uh, come up with some programming for that, I'm gonna go ahead and start making cuts and placing the hydro. The piece that goes in here, I don't know where I have it, but uh, there's a USB connection that goes here and then there's cigarette lighter. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna relocate the uh, USB connector to go from here to the center. That way I could use this area for the shifter handle to come out of. And the shifter itself is gonna sit pretty low. So I believe we'll probably see just about this, or if not just the handle, which would be great because then that just requires the minimal amount of cutting and it will just look slick and clean, just like the shifter. I made a quick template, then trace it into this piece of metal that is gonna get nuts welded on the back. And then I have a couple of bend points, so this will get bent down. That line right there, that's another line that I'll bend, and this one here. And what happen, What will happen is this will sit on this tunnel, and then this place here will touch the rest of the tunnel, which is like a compound bend. So one part of the hydro will be sitting on the edge of the trans tunnel, but then it tapers down. So these flaps here, when they get bent, they will make contact with the lower side of the trans tunnel. So then I could weld it on this side. I got two bends, I got one more. And but you can see here that I feel that well, weld it out here, down here, along the side. Punch my holes for the nuts. Um, I could tap it, enough threads there, but just in case, I'd rather put them nuts in the back. And now I've got to make one more bend. I, I am trying to make this bend, right? It's got to be it's pretty much the same direction as this one, 90 degrees. The issue I ran into, if I set it here and I put it over here, and I bend it, even though I could adjust the fingers to just bend that area, I still got this to worry about hitting with that. So I just, I was looking at this, figure out, I didn't know that you could take out the fingers here. So in this case where I had this right there and I went to bend it, it's gonna touch on that finger here. So I made some adjustments with this, take that finger out now I could put the piece here on my marks so you can barely even see. Go down, make the bend, and then the piece will still only bend that section mm -hmm. and not f up that. Oops, sorry, messed that up. <laughs> Hopefully, this rocket science is good and it bends. There you go. Boom. So now there's multiple bends and I don't I don't call that a compound bend, but it's pretty cool that this is you could remove this out of the table. Yeah, completely adjustable. Right. So one more thing I learned today. <laughs> so now this gets on the car, we could mark it up, grind in a couple of spots, prep the car for welding, and then make sure this is taken care of. Filling around just throwing it on there. I gotta delete this hump right here that is part of the chassis but once that is deleted the bracket will fit pretty good just grind it down in some spots but i could feel metal to metal all around we're solid with that once i get that tweaked out i could go ahead and finish the bracket and weld it in so that's pretty good uh, now we get it to ginch we could make millions of this and everybody's with an 890 you have a hydro with a street 890 
Now you may remember my failed R&D uh, angle kit that I made. Rather than going and instantly throwing WiseFab on the car, I wanted to explore a cheaper and more streetable solution. So I was making a knuckle adapter. Josiah, the owner of FDF, saw the video and messaged me and ironically, he had developed something very similar on an A90 Super Knuckle that we had sent him to scan. But I didn't know about it because I knew that he was developing like a full proper big angle kit because that's what Johan's using on his car. So I thought it was pretty funny because when you guys see the model that he sent to me, it's a very, very similar design to what I came up with. But the main difference is it's actually like a two piece design that will end up tack welding once we get in place. But I had him send me three different iterations because I'm not sure where the best tie rod pickup point is going to be. So again, this is like the development phase. I'm taking something that he put some time into designing, figuring out what feels the best, and then this will probably be engineered to look and be constructed in a different manner. But unlike my really terrible knuckle, this shouldn't instantly bend the tie rod and should be good enough to test and get a bit more angle on a stock super knuckle. Very similar to my poorly executed design, we're essentially taking the tie rod pickup point, which is typically here, and we're moving it closer to the pivot point. That way the same amount of tie rod travel results in more uh, angle with the steering knuckle. But this is kind of a complex piece to like, I guess this would be like laser jet cut out of steel. So it's a two piece where we'll be able to put this in place and then weld this for mock up purposes. And then once we get it finalized, this could probably be made out of billet aluminum or something fancier. I don't really know the parts construction side of things and I'm looking forward to learn more about it, but I do understand the basic mechanics of where I want the tie rod in order for the car to do certain things. So the first step would be to bolt one of these setups onto a knuckle, put it on turn plates, see what it, the car does under high angle movements, and then we can decide where to go from there. So here's a little demonstration of what this will look like. Then we're gonna talk to the master Fab Johan and see how we wanna orient this. There's a little ridge on the bottom of the knuckle that I'm just grinding down for clearance for the bolt for the tie rod that sits on top of it. is I got it on lightning fast. The bad news is I should have thought about this. I didn't think it was gonna be that bad of an issue because the angle of the tie rod is actually optimal now, but still the added leverage of all of the jacking when you turn the wheels to lock, uh, looks like it bent the tie rod ever so slightly. Had I known, I probably could have put some sort of sleeve or welded onto it. Definitely need to get stronger tie rods. Hopefully it's enough to test, but I kind of us. The disadvantage of doing this is that the steering ratio is gonna be crazy tight. One turn, that much angle. It's gonna feel pretty wild, but if this setup's dialed in, like this would be a really cool, really cheap, efficient option to uh, add some angle to your Supra. All right, so quick update with where we stand with the car. We've got the Polish legend Adam in here. Do you like your name? That's what, that's your new name. I like it. <laughs> so we've got a DCT shifter from Seems Legit. We've got a Chase Base handbrake that isn't set up yet. We still need to put it in some lines. And where are we currently at Bartek with the transmission okay, control? Okay, so it's like fully operational right now. Clutch pedal works, uh, sequential shifter works. It emulates the original one. Um, car drives pretty sweet, uh, delivers the power. So go get a spin and tell me how do you like it. We don't have a proper diff lock set up just yet, but Bartek was able to figure something out. Yeah, that... so there is a little hack. Uh -huh. uh, it should last for a lap or two, but we'll come up with the controller for the diff uh, to operate it and um, you know define the locking level. But for now, uh, hopefully it will last. Uh, yeah. We'll see. Um, so we start the car, we're in park. So I hold this back, it puts us in second, yeah. Go down to first. If we hold this forward, that'll put us in neutral. Hold it forward again. Yeah. That'll put us in reverse. Long, hold it again. Long, hold it again. You'll go to the park. Long, 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 long. And you're in the park. It's pretty cool. So, we'll test it out. See how she feels. Uh, does this car have a magnet? I don't know. Is it's it in the, it's in the GCU? Yeah, it's in, it's in the GCU here. <laughs> 
Will the characteristics of the shifts change the faster we go? Yeah. Like the more throttle? Like yes. will they cut more? Yes. Let me downshift to a gear that I shouldn't be in? No. Okay. It has uh, downshift over and protection. Got it. So for uh, everything above second gear is 4K. Uh -huh. So it won't allow you to downshift uh, above 4K. Cool. And from second to one is uh, 2K. I'm just going to drive like a normal car before we start drifting it. I forgot how fast it was. Jesus Christ! Yeah. It's a good car. What the f I don't think I drove it that much after we tuned it. This is a quick car. Yeah. <laughs> it has good transmission control. I was testing it to see if I go down to first. Everything seems smooth though, there's no abrupt things. Alright, are we ready to test it with some drifting? Of course, yes. Will it continue to learn the more you drive it too? Of course, yes. That's cool. Alright, we're ready for the diff lock. Yeah, ready for the diff, uh, open the trunk. Again, this is, this is a rudimentary kind okay. of test. So in case it starts to smell, then just stop. <laughs> okay. Uh, I just pull it out. Okay. Let's see how it works. We're back to stock angle. After the bent tie rod, I didn't want to risk it. Polish Adam leaves today in like no time. So I wanted to get the most out of the time, so we put it back to stock. We'll figure the angle out later. I forgot I have a clutch. Can I use it? Sure. Okay. That's what it's for. That's scary. I think we are hitting some traction control, huh? Yeah, it is possible. Clutch like a clutch. That's cool that I was able to clutch in and not stall it going back. Yeah. Diff lock thing makes me nervous. Why though? Or sorry, just the not the diff lock, the um, the clutch kick. Why? I don't know. I don't want to break it. I'll try you it. Won't be better than uh, actually 
clutch kicking yep. is for floating the car. Exactly. So exactly. you can float the car kind of off throttle, let it grip up, rather than having to stay on throttle like you usually do with an automatic. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that worked. It'll take a couple of drives to get used to it, yeah, but yeah. you get the idea. That was pretty cool. It's kind of scary how much grip this has. Like, I feel like the camera doesn't do it justice. This it is had, more hooked up than the forward or Supra. I put more air in the rear ends. Uh -huh. It has like three and a half bars right now. And it still is hooked up. Yeah. These chassis have so much grip. Yeah. Oh, oh you're uh, on the clutch. I forgot. When you are on the clutch, like, you control it. Everything it's seems happy. Yeah. <laughs> No, I think overall our uh, our diff fix, as we as we thought, was kind of on borrowed time. Um, Jordan's sending me out that thing, that module, so I should be able to test it like properly with a, a welded diff soon. Um, but it shifts and does everything that it needs to. I'm really curious how it's going to feel using the clutch with a handbrake, but I liked using the clutch just for floating it. It's still going to be a fast car. Kind of wild. I forgot how quick this thing is. It kind of shits on the four rotor, but the four rotor sounds a lot better. So <laughs> just the torque is crazy. It makes like I don't know. It's like 500 foot pounds of torque at like. 3500 RPM. Yeah, another so cool like, thing is that you actually have a full car, so you can like close the windows, play yeah, yeah. the music, drive to the other place. AC works? Yeah, it does. <laughs> is there an automatic mode or will I need to put a button in for that? Uh, right now the, I haven't programmed it yet, but we can do it. Well, overall, I think great success. Now the next step is me to put this thing through its paces and get some proper testing once I get a diff and a handbrake in it. Yeah. Yeah. It's scary drifting around the compound with no handbrake in such a gripped up car, but it works. There's still a itty bit of refinement left. We just found one little thing where it doesn't like to shift in drift because of the rev limiter lowering torque. Adam's already working on a fix, but I gotta run. I know you're gonna be out of here, so thank you again for everything, dude. We appreciate you. You're welcome. <laughs> That's my pleasure. And uh, Bartek's gonna be hanging out. How long are you here for? I don't know, probably till like Wednesday, so we still can do some more stuff. Cool. Uh, and test it. Yeah. So we'll, next steps, we'll get the handbrake dialed in. Maybe I can figure out a tie rod solution so I can get a proper angle kit on it. We'll get the uh, torque thing figured out. That way I could shift in drift. And one thing that I didn't mention, while these guys have been down here, they've also been doing a project with Duarte on a DCT drift car. It's a 2J, it sounds sick. Check it out on the Drift HQ channel if you wanna see more. But for now, thank you. I appreciate the effort you guys have been putting in and uh, this thing's gonna be a rocket. Thank you very much for the trust and I hope you enjoy it. Okay, thanks dude. Yeah. <laughs>